The final step in preparing your pelts is boarding or nailing them up to dry. Beaver are dried in an oblong pattern that follows the contour of the body without overstretching or thinning the pelt. NAFA offers a very concise template so you can draw those patterns on your drying boards. Traditionally, beaver sizes were broken down in 5-inch increments with measurements taken from side to side and nose to tail and added together. More typically now, they are measured on a light table and calculated in square inches. The template patterns for the boards are between the 5 inch grade tolerances so as to accommodate for shrinkage when the pelt is drying. There are a couple of ideas for transferring the template to your boards. One method for quick reference is using different colors for the different rings. This is a beaver board with a uniform pattern from a NAF over here. And uh, see all the rings are marked. Different color when we grade the beaver to check which size they are. Boarding and drying beaver takes a fair amount of space. Unless you have a lot of room, you'll need a system to make things more efficient. The most common is a boarding table that is sized to fit your boards and allows you to use both sides of the board. The, the board is a four feet by eight feet plywood board, three, three quarter inch thick, the thickness. So make sure that the nails go good in them. If you take it too, too narrow, it's going to wobble. So three quarter inch is good. And when you buy your sheet of plywood, it's four, four, eight, four feet by eight feet. And there is a 96 inch long. So you can do three board. Every board is 32 inch long. So after that, you prepare your beaver. You put the head on this side. That's going to go on the bottom of your board when you hang up to the ceiling. You tack it on the floor to, so the hair goes straight. And after that, you bring it to the ceiling. So that's your board. You go in there. You put the first beaver. You uh, grade it and then you uh, pin it to the board. When you're done the first one, just turn it around along the edge. And it goes underneath and you do the second one to maximize maximize the board and after you're all done you take the beaver the head is towards the you give it a tug so the hair go go straight after that you take it you hang it on the ceiling to get to get dry in your first head and there are some very space saving efficiencies that may be helpful and other tips to make the job a little easier Jim Gibb has a design for a very space-efficient beaver table. It just folds up and stores out of the way and is great for using at camp where space is limited. Easy to put up and takes very little storage space. Plants are simple and materials inexpensive, just some 1x4 and butter strap hinges. The full set of plans will be posted on the NAFA website for anybody wanting to build one. Another great idea that Jim Gibb does is putting the three smaller sized beaver templates on one side of the standard size 32 by 48 inch board. If you do this, you have to put a single pattern on the opposite side and put your beaver up on that side first. Flip it over and you can put two smaller beaver on the other side. Another convenient adaptation is using the table with a frame that rotates. Just stand in one place and nail it up. Another tip is marking the top of your board so the pelts on both sides are the same direction. So when they are drying, the heads are both facing down. At some point, you'll have to close up the leg holes. Jackie Wurr sews them shut before he nails up. All you need to do is get underneath and grab a piece of the skin. You don't have to go all the way through in order to do it. If you choose to sew the legs, this can also be done on the board. First, grab your pelt by the nose and give it a couple of good snaps. This helps take any remaining sawdust or fat chunks out of the fur. It also loosens the pelt for easier stretching and causes the fur to stand up off the pelt. There are several ways to judge which ring to start your nailing. First is a board which you have marked that translates the length of the pelt to the ring in size. Carl Hunter measures the length of the pelt and deducts four inches. He then finds a ring in the pattern closest to that number, but not over it. So I hang on by my finger like this. I take my tape measure and I put it right there. And I measure the length of my pelt. Okay, I've got 
roughly 36 inches, okay? I can't stretch that at 36 inches because if I do that, then I got no width. I have to make this symmetrical. So, I deduct four inches. Four inches will be enough to compensate for my nose and allow me to stretch the width I need. So, from line to line, I try to find one that's 36 or in that area. I have one that's a little better than 32, so that gives me a reference point to start on. Or the way Jackie Wurz uses. You try and grab it at the nose end that you did never cut off, and at the center of your tail. You try to look in the middle of your two legs where the center would be. When you go to stretch it, just hold it nice and snug. Don't overstretch it, just nice and snug. And once you have your pinpoint of your circles that you're going to do, always come back two rings. Always, it's, your beaver will fit perfect every time. Remember these key points when handling your beaver. Use a NAFA pattern to mark your drying boards. Don't overstretch your beaver. Better to go down a size than up. 